All right, everyone, we are back and we are going to deal with today some of the uh, two of the most important functions that you'll use for your project that you'll be submitting um, for peer review uh, to the Wolfram Demonstrations page um, for your final project, and that is manipulate and animate. So one of the key things and cool things in Mathematica is being able to, and actually when you're doing big data processing in general, you need to figure out how to create a figure of merit that is dynamic. So um, especially when it comes to engineering, what are the tunable engineering parameters that allow you to change uh, the response of a system or a physical system or a function or a material, right? So in heat transfer, what happens if you change temperatures? What happens if you change thermal conductivities? What happens if you change the number of walls in a series of, res of uh, heat resistors? Uh, and vibrations, what happens if you change spring constants and initial conditions and all those good things? Beam bending is the same way. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to make a function. It's going to be a function of a couple of tunable parameters, A, B, and C. Uh, and then some parameter X right here. Close it, shift intercept equal, and it's gonna be a times cosine, oops, cosine of b times x plus c. So cosine function, nothing really too uh, interesting at the moment, but what we're about to do is do manipulate. So manipulate is going to allow us to dynamically change certain parameters in our system, so a, b, c, uh, and x, and we're gonna vary, oops, x goes from minus two pi to two pi, and we are going to now manipulate A goes from uh, basically, we'll say from one to 10. We'll also say same thing for B goes from one to 10 and C, C goes from one to 10. Um, one of the things that you'll probably wanna do is just to make it simple, go in integers. Um, if not, it looks at it and it actually will allow you to do this numerically. So look, I could change the phase here. Ooh, nice. I could change frequency here. I could change amplitude. You see that y-axis is changing. So one of the things when you're doing manipulate is you want to make sure that you have um, essentially the appropriate axes um, so that you can kind of see all your functions. So, But you can kind of do that at a later date. Um, but that's just one um, particular example. So let's go ahead and let's manipulate manipulate a polar plot. So polar plot, plot and I'm going to do theta and go from theta goes from 0 to t and I'm going to do I'm gonna set my plot range to 20 and then I'm going to go from t goes from 1 to 6, uh, 4 pi. So I could do this and then Spiral. <laughs> so again, uh, you know, fun. Uh, but again, you want to think about this uh, in you know relatively serious terms in order to kind of work and you know create the sliders that you need for your project. Um, so again, uh, this is actually a really really important function. You'll use this quite a bit on many of your assignments in this course. Um, let's do a plot 3D. So cosine of x times y plus a, and then we're going to go from x goes from zero to three, and we're going to go from y goes also from 0 to 3, and then we're going to manipulate a goes from 0 to 1. So I can play around with this, make it a wave function a little bit. You could even go from minus 1 to 1. But anyways, those are essentially what we're kind of looking at here. Um, you could do the same thing and manipulate um, lists as well, lists of data. So for example, I can go ahead and look at, let's make, again, some trajectories. So I'm going to make a table, so or to trajectories, table. I'm going to do, oops, table of trans, uh, transpose. I'm going to go make trajectories for a time from i goes from 1 to 100. And then let's go from random real. Let's go from minus 100, oops, to 100. And let's repeat that 100 times, or actually, 100 and, actually, 100, yeah, let's start at zero. 101 times, so that our lists are the same length. And we're gonna repeat that for, um, basically, let's do, J goes from one to 100. So I've got 100 different trajectories um, that I'm looking at here. I can, if I wanna do a list line plot, I could do trash one, and I could see this. But now let's say I want to look at all my trajectories. Well, I could do, um, I could actually do manipulate, um, basically A 
a goes from 1 to the length of traz for intervals of 1. And then I could look at all those different trajectories. So I could just cycle through them and see if there's anything unique in, in any one of those trajectories. So um, Mathematica has a lot of resources of, uh, available to us. One of the cool things is you could look at element uh, data, and then you could figure out all the properties, all the properties that are available in Mathematica for you to look at for every single element. Um, there's element data, there's country data, there's image data. Um, there's a huge resource of data, that, huge data sets that are available for free for Mathematica. So for example, if I want to look at um, table element data, if I want to look at the valence electrons, um, valence from i goes from one to length, actually let's just, let's do 106. So if I want to look at what are the valence electrons, the number of valence electrons for the first 106 elements, I've got it right here. So really, really, really cool. And then the last thing, uh, we've mentioned this before um, several times in this course actually, is one of the ways you can actually do plot legends in a plot. So for example, I'm going to make a plot sine of x from x goes from minus 2 pi to 2 pi. And let's say I want to add another plot basically in that function. So I could do p2 or another like image as well. So I could do plot cosine x from x from minus 2 pi to 2 pi. Um, so I could do what's called an inset. So what I can do, or an epilogue essentially. Um, so I could do, um, for example, actually in here, I could do, uh, let's see, I could do epilogue, and I could do inset, and I could do P2, and I could set that, uh, the location. So I could do, for example, minus four, zero. And see, I put that plot right at the center there. I could also put it in basically four and 0 0.5, top right. So again, that's not pretty, but if you generate your, you know, uh, your legends elsewhere, you can combine them like that with epilogue. That is it for lecture two. So next time we're going to get into importing data and running some statistics, statistical analysis on that big data sets. And yeah, um, really we're getting into the meat of this course. So get excited. I will see you all next time in the next video. Bye.